This is how to brief an instrument approach as is taught by Liberty University School of Aeronautics and as standardized by the FAA. So before we start our flight, what we want to do is we want to brief the approach before we even get into the airplane to make sure that there is no regulations or things that might pop up and affect us while in the air. And that is a part of what is said in FAA regulations 91.103 of the pre-flight action. And that is becoming familiar with all available information pertaining to that flight. For the approach plate that we're going to do today is the ILS for runway four into Lynchburg. If you have four flight and you're using that to navigate, it will automatically update all the approach plates to make sure that they're valid. But to just double check what you want to do, you want to zoom into the side and verify the date along the edge of the approach plate is valid. And then what you want to do, you want to work from the top of the plate down and work through any information and look for anything that might inhibit you from making this approach. You want to look in the notes section up at the top and look if there's anything that might, again, prevent you from completing this approach. The next thing that I like to do is to highlight the frequencies that are in the box below the notes section. The ATIS frequency for Lynchburg Airport is 119.8. Roanoke Approach, what we will be on before we get handed off the tower, is 1350. Then the Lynchburg Tower is 127.65. And once we're on the ground, 121.9. I like to have these frequencies highlighted in preparation. Before we get vectored into the approach, we can get these set up into our COM1 and COM2 so that we're ahead of the airplane. And then we want to pick the best approach based upon the weather that is there at the airport. We also want to look at the profile view to look at our altitudes, figure out what we're going to be doing before we get into the airplane again to stay ahead of the airplane. When we're in flight, after we've established ourselves at our cruising altitude, we can actually start to do our checklists and review the approach. The Instrument Procedures Handbook states that you can start briefing the approach at any time in the flight. You don't necessarily have to brief it a couple minutes right before you go down. My instructors have taught me to turn on the autopilot during this time so that it's less task saturation and that you could hold your altitude and heading better, especially if you're a little bit rusty as stick and rudder fly. And then the next thing that I do is I go through the airbag checklist and what airbag stands for is the ATIS at the arriving airport. You wanna check the weather to make sure that there's no changes, any updates, any notams for the arriving airport so nothing catches you off guard when you come in. And also you wanna make sure that you have the information of the AS. Then you want to install the approach. So on the G1000 here, you want to pretty much plug in what you're going to be doing into the G1000 so that it is ready to go and you follow the prompts of the G1000 as you go down on this approach. The next thing you want to do is brief the approach. That's pretty much what we did for the pre-flight. But what we want to do is to do more in detail, to become more familiarized with all the information that will allow us to fly the ILS down to runway four. So we want to know the approach course, 036. We would like to know the touchdown zone and the airport elevation. These are all at the top. The lighting system that you should expect on this ILS approach. Then you have the missed approach nodes. Then you have the bird's eye view here with the minimum safe altitude here. You have the holding pattern here. And then you have initial approach fixes into the course. And then you have the airport diagram here and over top bird's view of that. And then you have all your information down here for the profile view. Profile view will give you kind of a side two-dimensional view of what you're going to be flying. And you're going to be going down to 3,000 feet, not below that. And then you're going to be coming in and we're going to be intercepting the glide slope. And that is intercepting glide slope at 2,900. We want to brief the missed approach when you come down to your decision altitude here. And we are in a Cessna 172, so we are going to be either in category A or B. What's usually uh, promoted at Liberty is to be in Category B. We might bust the uh, 90 knot rule. So we usually like to be in Category B, which is 91 knots to 120 knots, so that it will allow for any non-precise uh, flying. So for the ILS-4 here is 1,105 with a horizontal visibility of 2,400 feet. When we go down to that point and we have the runway environment in sight, as it says in uh, FAR Regulations 91-175, we are free to descend below our decision altitude and land at the airport. If not, we then have to do a missed approach. And the missed approach note section is up at the top right hand side underneath the ILS runway 4 here. And it says to climb to 1800, then a climbing right turn to 3500 on a heading of 080 and then onto the Lynchburg VOR 
radial 053 to the swarm intersection, 20 DME and hold. And so that's what's gonna happen if we descend down to our decision altitude and we do not have a runway environment in sight. For the rest of the airbag checklist, the approach descent checklist, so that is down here, what we wanna do is the pre-landing checklist. We want to do our descent checklist to make sure that the airplane is in a position to land safely. On a precision approach, when the glide slope is a dot high, we can do our preliminary landing checklist of throttle, mixture, and flaps. And so we can get ourselves configured, slow down to that 90 knot speed, and prepare for our descent. The G is the go around briefing or the missed approach, which I have already done. So that is the airbag checklist. So configuring the G1000, you want to activate the approach so that it is activated in the system and it is working. Um, and also, since we're on a precision approach, we want to be on magenta needles. If it is on a VOR approach or anything that is using a ground-based system, we want to be on green needles here and tuned to the, either the localizer or the VOR. So once the G1000 is configured, we can proceed on to the rest of our checklist and pretty much follow what the precision approach plate here states for us to do. Once the system is set in here, our minimums will automatically be sent in here. And as the altimeter tape comes down, there will be a little bracket that will show our decision altitude. And we will not descend below that if we do not have the airport environment in sight. And because of that, that's why I feel safe setting in the mist approach altitude that we need to climb to and our altitude bug over here. So once the descent checklist, pre-landing checklist is done, and all we really need to do is disconnect the autopilot and hand fly this to better our stick and rudder skills. When we come down to our decision altitude and we break out of the clouds and we have the runway environment in sight or the runway lighting system in sight, we can do our landing checklist, flap set and indicated, which flaps should be at 10 based upon the previous checklist. Landing lights at night are on, the autopilot is off and runway markings are confirmed. So the confirmed runway you are landing on from before is in sight. So that is how to do a briefing and instrument approach. These are my resources from the Instrument Procedures Handbook, the FAR regulations, and chapter four of the Instrument Procedures Handbook. Thank you.